Yo, how's it going guys? Welcome to the channel as always. I'm your host, Mike Hernandez. Uh, we are going to look at the primary arms, one to six power, front focal plane, ACSS, Raptor reticle optic. Um, what's cool about this one is it has subtensions for 300 blackout, 762 by 35, which is 300 blackout, 762 by 39, which is more commonly known as the AK round. So, super excited for this. Let's get started. I'm gonna call that zeroed. I mean, I'm shooting a little to the left. I'll try and get another adjustment on that. Plus, we're still ammo testing, so I don't know if this ammo is gonna be the one I'm gonna use. 350 yards is what I'm estimating this target at. So, here we go. Just to the right, I got a wind. So I'm gonna hold five mile per hour wind. <laughs> I'm broken half. About 350 right there. And then it broke. I don't know how I like that. Hmm. I think we'll find out though. Because that's all I got. Well, that was a hit. I don't know if you could hear that. And it was top right shoulder. So I have a wind up there that's giving me a little bit of a hard time. But I got good shots. So let's go. And I'm right there. You can see it. Yeah, barely tink. So it's interesting to hear the 300 blackout kind of peeing at 500 yards. left Bingo 
600 yards. Five mile per hour wind, right on the sub tensions. Proven. Right here too. Good hits. Guys, let's jump into a parts list on this because I know you're dying to know what's on here. Um, full disclosure, I will always tell you guys anytime I've received product uh, to do reviews on or compensation for anything like that. And on this system, the optic that we're going to be talking about was given to me by Primary Arms as well as the upper was given to me for a photo shoot that I have done recently with a Bravo and with Fieldcraft Survival. Um, just to put that out there immediately, I don't believe it affects the process that I use. I don't believe it affects my opinion about them. Um, I've been doing um, reviews now for a couple of years. Jeez, I think it was seven years today I found one of the first um, pictures. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, I don't know how any page or any other um, evaluator would be able to evaluate everything on the market without the support of certain manufacturers. Um, you guys know these things are expensive. I myself cannot afford, you know, to have 20 ARs here within the next five months to get, you know, episodes out. So that's the reason why it happens that way. I will destroy whatever comes that needs to be destroyed. It has not been the case for me yet. I don't believe it's going to be the case in the future because a lot of these guys really do know what they're doing. Um, and with that, my PSA, let's get started. I'll start with making this safe. We'll go ahead. Oh, nothing in that. Nothing in the chamber. Stick my finger in there. And let's get started. So at the very end of this, the business end, we have a 51 tooth flash hider from AAC, um, Advanced Armament Corp. Um, this one mates with my 300, um, I'm sorry, my 762 um, AAC SDN6 suppressor. The reason behind this one, just so you guys know, because I know I got a couple questions on them, it's kind of like a one can to rule them all. This is my first and only suppressor that I have, and I decided to get this one so I could jump between 308, 300 blackout, 556 if I needed to, um, because it was my first one. So that is why you see that one on my Remington, my Remington 700 review, which you can take a look at that one because that one's already live. So that's on the front, 16.1 uh, inch barrel from BCM. Um, I have a QD mount here up front for my sling. Also a rail section from BCM with the Atlas bipod on an American Defense um, mount. These are highly recommended, probably my favorite uh, bipod on the market right now. I've gone through a couple of cheap ones. Don't skimp out on them. Get the one that, that uh, is already tested and has proven to be reliable. So as we make our way down on this upper, uh, it's got a BCM bolt carrier group, uh, charging handle, and it came complete like that. I added the other stuff, obviously. On the top, you'll find the aero precision mount that came with the primary arms optic. Um, I am running irons because this is more of an SPR, DMR style build, um, special purpose rifle or designated marksmanship rifle. Um, the whole reason for this was to kind of see the difference between um, the 16 inch barrel and the 8.75 inch barrel, which I've originally been running. So that's also part of what's gonna come into play. But as we go through the parts, what we're gonna focus on today is the optic. So um, the iron sights are uh, on there for now. We'll see how long they last. And then it's made it to a lower that I had set up for um, a Mark 12, MK12 or Mark 12 clone that I haven't finished yet. So this one does have some goodies on it. It's just a real run of the mill DPMS lower. Um, that actually is funny because this is my Obama gun. Um, for some of you who know or were trying to purchase guns during the Obama era, um, you all know that they were very few and far between and difficult to come by when he first came into power. Or service, however you look at it. So uh, this one is a full ambidextrous lower, well, almost full. I mean, it doesn't have like the, uh, the mag release um, on the other side, but it does have a bad lever. Um, and it does have a selector switch, which is ambidextrous. But what's cool about this lower is I have a Geisley, which I believe to be, if not the best, one of the best triggers uh, manufacturers um, in, in our community. Um, this one is an SSAE. Like I said, it's the enhanced. It's a two-stage. Um, and that, honestly, is probably the best part um, out of the lower. I just have a regular um, Magpul stock on the end. And I do run a B5 Systems 
um, grip because I like the angle. Um, again, I always say my size, I'm only 5'6", 150 pounds. So when you're looking at the ergonomics of this thing, um, it actually fits me a little better. Um, I believe that is all I have on here at the moment. So with that being said, we'll get into the rest of the video. So as I start this process of evaluating these uh, low power variable optics or LPVOs, you'll hear them being referred to, um, there's a gold standard that I like to compare um, as what I would say is a solid 100% optic that you absolutely need to have. And that is the Vortex 1 to 6 power. Um, that one, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to the price point, um, reliability, um, use, uh, glass, um, all those factors that come into play when I'm looking at these, that one is kind of like my foundation. So with that being said, there is a couple of other ones that Vortex makes, uh, specifically the one that I think needs to be in this conversation is the 1 to 4 power uh, PST, the Viper line uh, that they discontinued. That one is also really nice. Um, and the price point for that one is a little more similar um, to the primary arms. Uh, the 1 to 6 uh, one from Vortex that I was telling you about is substantially more expensive. So when we're looking at the 1 to 4 power, the Viper line that was dis discontinued, um, that's a good uh, comparison for what we're, we're doing. Also, EOTAC has a, has a variant or a low power variable variant um, that I have reviewed or have uh, used as well as uh, Bushnell. I think there was a, uh, my buddy sent me a Bushnell on a Tavor that was actually really nice too. So as we're looking at all these optics, you know, the price points are very similar, but you will find that the primary arms one is the cheapest out of all of them and it's and i and i heard another um reviewer said you know he hates to use that word cheap uh because it's really not a good descriptor of what they are they're not cheap they're, they're quality optics um it's just a way to measure the price point they are less ex maybe i should use that it is less expensive than all the other low power variable front focal plane scopes out in the market um now let me get this out there first and foremost I would not consider this a duty carry um, optic. Clearly, it's not rated for that. You know, it's not bomb proof. It's not going to be uh, used in, in the theater of war um, or even carried by a police officer. This optic is going to be used by someone like me who's not that high speed. Okay. I just need something that will be dialed to the caliber um, that I'm going to use it on. I'm not going to move it around to several other guns. I mean, unless they're 300 blackout. Right now, it's going to stay on that one. And it's designed for that, you know, a 16 inch barrel, 110 grain, 300 blackout. And that specifically is why this was so attractive to me. Um, this, isn't, this isn't, like I said, a duty carry gun. Like when you're looking at optics and um, are, are, are thinking, you know, like end of days, you know, this thing is gonna uh, last the test of time. Now, the flip side of that, I have had one, two primary arms optics that have not had any issues. And if you guys have been following me for a while on Instagram or even here on YouTube, you know that I actually use my, uh, my equipment and it's hard use. I'm not doing you know uh, evaluations to where I'm like throwing them off the back of my, my Jeep and dragging them or freezing them and stuff like that. Um, and maybe there'll be a time for that in the future. Uh, but right now I'm just using my um, optics like most of us. You know, Like I said, I'm not high speed. I'm either hunting with them or I am long distance shooting. I'm taking my son out. Um, you know, having a good time and enjoying my Second Amendment right to do so. So that's where we're coming from. You know, if, if you're looking for someone who's like, you know, Special Forces or some of the cooler high-speed guys that I that I um, I've learned from, you know, that's not what this is. I'm just a regular dude, like I always say. I'm just a dad, um, an outdoorsman, um, somebody who's looking to utilize these items on the market. So I have a lot of disclaimers. I say stuff like that a lot, but. I, I feel the need to explain that constantly. Um, so getting into that, this optic, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it out there, this optic is probably, it, well in my experience it already is, but on the market right now, it's probably the best bang for your buck. I don't know where you can go other than primary arms and find a one to six power variable optic that for one is a first focal plane or front focal plane scope. If you don't know what that means, it's where the, reti the reticle is etched in the tube. Um, if you have a second focal plane scope, um, which I do, I have those, um, and prefer the front, but also use, or first, and use the second focal plane, um, the reticle is etched in a way to where you will not have a true zero throughout the magnification. 
So a lot of times you'll get a second focal plane, magnify it all the way to its highest power, zero it, and then remember as you dial it back or, or away that it's not gonna hold a true zero. That's the reason why I prefer front focal plane or first focal plane scopes is because as you get in there, you can dial it in, zero it at 50 yards where it's asking you to, and no matter where you're using it, whether it's a one power you know, to, to have like a CQB or a close quarter um, view through it, because it is a, a one power, or a true one power, um, and you can dial it down when you're in the prone or hunting and it'll give you that nice magnification. You don't have to worry about you know, if it's actually at zero. So this scope is really nice because it has a chevron tip, um, and that one is right on at your 50, and then it has subtensions all the way to 600 yards. Um, you'll see here in this video, I zeroed it. Well, first I bore sighted it, stuck it on my gun, bore sighted it. My first five rounds were just low um, uh, of the um, zero mark, couple of adjustments. Within eight rounds, I was already you know zeroed at 50 yards. I then immediately took it to 300, 400, 500, and 600 yards. Um, I like to use yards just because I'm a little more accustomed to like the football fields and it's just a preference you can use meters too. But the subtensions are right on. Um, I did have an issue with ammo so always consider as you're going through this um, if your ammo or consider that your ammo may not be up to the task. Um, I was using a Magtech, Magtech 300 blockout ammo I think it was like 100, it was weird, it was like 128 grain ammo. And the reason why I use that one is because I had it in my safe. And a lot of us do that, right? A lot of us don't have time to sit there and make the expense, time and money, um, to buy you know 10 different manufacturers um, for 300 Blackout. I will tell you as a side note though, that 300 Blackout, although I do love it, that is the one Achilles heel of the, of the round, is that it's a little bit more difficult to find manufacturers and then a round that is actually accurate. So as we progress through it, um, you'll see I have had great progress with Barnes, but it is expensive and sometimes there's limited quality. So I haven't um, figured out or found the ammo because like I said, this is literally the first 20 rounds that I've ran through this gun as well as with this optic. Uh, one of the things that I will also say is that it was 109 degrees, 110 degrees, and the humidity was somewhere around 45%. Um, that's typical for Arizona um, during monsoon season here in August. Um, if you're shooting um, in, in climate like that, you know that you know, it will test your system. It will, it will tax you know, the system that you're using and ammo does funny things, production ammo does funny things um, when you have um, that level of climate or heat or, or humidity on it. So I didn't struggle through this test, but it, it was interesting, it was a little, inconsistent um, in terms of this first round which has everything to do with the ammunition in my opinion um, and not the optic. You'll see as I got the uh, the guns or the system set up and I did this all from the prone just to make it easy you know not, nothing too difficult where I'm doing unconventional positions but all prone uh, with a bag under to support um, the back and as I took it you know in 100 yard increments it performed really well. Me being a, somewhat of a, of a perfectionist and being critical, um, I like to see you know sub MOA um, spread and, and, and performance from what I'm running. Um, like I said, this optic did excellent even with an ammo that was substandard, but also even with an ammo that it really wasn't dialed towards. When I got this optic, and, and you can go through the list, um, it will note that it is designed for 110 grain ammunition. So that is going to be um, the next step of testing for me is to get something that um, will print really nice groups but also be completely dialed to this gun. Um, when I spoke to the representative um, from Primary Arms and also with Dimitri, um, he did mention that this was also designed, the optic anyways, and the reticle for a 16 inch gun. And that's why I have it on this one and not my nine inch. Um, 300 blackout is designed for a full powder burn at around nine inches. So what's also going to be part of the whole process is seeing, you know, what that extra couple does, inches anyways, um, for the velocity and for the accuracy because it'll get just a little bit more of a turn um, with that barrel. So like I said, first impression was excellent. Um, lowest price point on the market, easily comparable to, you know, the Vortex. Uh, Viper 1 to 4, 
um, the Bushnell and the EOTech, um, but the King is still the one to six from Vortex. Um, I would highly recommend this. We'll see as time progresses um, how it does in terms of reliability. Um, it's getting banged around. You know, when I get into my Jeep and take it anywhere, you guys have seen I have a little rack in the back. I just strap it in there or I throw it in my front seat and you know, let's go. Um, somebody, <laughs> I had this range, um, I think he was, uh, he worked for the range during one of the events that we went to and I had my primary arms optic and he just flat out told me, oh, that's a primary arms. It will lose its zero when, when you, you know, jar it. So just be aware of that. I have yet to see that on my red dot, on my 14 power. And then now this one, I already took it out. It's already, you know, scratched up. I'll probably roll some footage of that. And I'm not losing zero anywhere. So uh, long story short, um, highly recommended it in terms of my first impression. Um, today is August 12th. I have a um, rifle tag in November for um, deer. I have a buck tag um, from November 1st through the 10th, I believe is what it is. It might be the 7th, I'm not sure. I have to look back at that. And I am intending on taking this optic with me. Um, I'll need to actually do some more testing on it in terms of ammunition. Um, like I said, I'm not using MagTech anymore um, because for whatever reason, I do not have good luck with this system. And by good luck, I mean I was shooting over one MOA. Um, you'll see in the, uh, the B-roll of me shooting that I had no issue stretching it out and within a couple rounds. It, all in all, I went out with uh, three mags and I came back, three, three mags of, of 30. Um, which is 90 rounds and i came back with 20 rounds because i was able to do everything that i need to and then play around a little bit with it um, at the end the other thing too is you know i was shooting a 10 inch target so um the sub tensions on these and and the way that the reticles are designed are typically for like an 18 inch spread um so it is a little more difficult when you're only shooting you know a 10 inch width but <laughs> i mean i had no issues making hits and consistently it's just i wanted tighter groups because i'm a perfectionist and it's a cross I have to carry, <laughs> being overly critical. Um, other than that, guys, highly recommend you getting this as a first impression. Um, I'm kind of repeating myself as we go on here because I can't think of anything else. Um, make sure you get good ammo. Um, and we'll see you on the next um, video, which will be like a midpoint. And then I'll do um, probably after five years. I like to take my time. The Remington 700 video was after five years. Actually, it's probably more than that now that I think about it. So we'll get a long-term video in here and then also hopefully use it for this next hunt. So thanks again, guys, for your support. Tell your friends. Um, you can see here on the end that I do uh, tags to, to subscribe and for the prior videos, share with um, your family if you like this stuff. Give me a like, uh, comment if you have any other questions, if I didn't touch on anything that you um, would like to see. I'm totally up for you know feedback. And again, thank you for support, and I'll see you on the next episode on my channel. Yo, guys, welcome to the page. Yo, welcome to the page, guys. As always, I'm your host, Mike Hernandez. Um, YouTube, YouTube is like show and tell only for grown men like me, middle-aged grown men like me.